Now, I'm not even about to waste your time with this intro. You all know full well that it's possible with this utter beast of a flight machine. But if you want to see the journey for yourself, stick around as we'll get right into it. Now, if you didn't watch the previous part where we tackle Sonic's story, for one, go watch it. It's bloody great. However, I'll quickly go over the rules here just as a reminder. First of all, if Tails collects a ring at any point, it's a fail and we have to restart the level. Since Tails' levels are basically a smaller chunk of the section Sonic has to go through, we'll barely be hitting checkpoints at all. Next of all, the run begins when we gain control of Tails after the Emerald Coast cutscene and ends upon the defeat of the Eggwalker. The run will be glitchless as they aren't really needed this time around. And of course, since the rings Sonic collects aren't actually added to our total unlike last time, we don't even need to be worried about it, so without further ado, let's get started. Our mission begins at the hotel resort of Station Square. Upon surviving a plane crash that no 8 year old has any business surviving, we invite Sonic over to our bookshop in the Mystic Ruins. Before going over there ourselves however I take the opportunity to get the jet anklet upgrade stashed in a secret room that only Tails has access to. This handy accessory not only looks the bomb, but it allows Tails to fly even faster, utterly dismantling the difficulty of this challenge. Can I even call it a challenge video at this point? Nevertheless, we head on the train only to be confronted by Eggman at Tails' bookshop. This is completely unrelated to the video, but I absolutely love how the cutscenes in this game change slightly depending on the character you're playing as. Don't get me wrong, they mostly mirror each other, but the delivery of a character's lines can change drastically. Dean Bristol puts in a far more sinister performance as Eggman for it tells his story, and this as a whole makes sense. Tails is just a kid after all, so no wonder he finds Eggman to be more of a threat than Sonic would. It's such a subtle detail, but it goes so far in making the repeating events a fresh experience. It's just a shame that they didn't continue you with this trend in the future games. Now this unfortunately doesn't translate to the gameplay side of things, Egg Hornet is basically the same fight that just takes longer with Tails, as he doesn't have the homing attack to spam on the first cycle. I would dare say it's even easier under the context of the run since Tails can fly away from the missiles and stay far clear of the rings whilst doing so. Regardless of the three hits we crack the egg wide open, only for Eggman to steal the purple emerald as Tails is stupid enough to pull it out in his presence. To this day, I still have no idea why anybody in their right mind would do this. Tails honestly reminds me of my sister when she dropped my DS in the toilet, as she was testing herself as she put it. With Chaos Emerald fueled with the power of a Chaos Emerald due to Tails' domastery, we now take the windstorm to the altar so we can access the first stage of this run, Windy Valley. Now the gimmick to tell his story is that you're constantly raising the AI to the goal. The developers wanted to give you a different experience playing as Tails, as when you look at it constructively, he's essentially a light version of Sonic's campaign. Despite your opponent, the goal remains the same, get to point A to B as fast as possible, whilst traversing about a third of the whole stage that Sonic goes through. Whilst you're technically in a race against the AI, it's just by namesake only, as Sonic would be at a major disadvantage thanks to Tails' flight, so he has a rubber band AI to compensate. However, there is a catch. The rubber banding works both ways. You can literally go as slow as humanly possible for most of the stage and still be able to beat Sonic to the goal, as the AI will do everything humanly possible to mess up, giving you a chance to catch up. I'm convinced the only time you could even lose this CPU is if you stop right at the goal and allow them to pass you. The course of Windy Valley takes place in the final section that Sonic traverses through, and we won. Yeah, this stage is infamous for being able to beat it in less than 30 seconds with Tails. Due to how open this section actually is, it's possible for Tails to fly by the geometry of the stage itself, following the appearing tracks from above. Since we never literally step foot on the stage itself, Windy Valley is easily completable. I'm sure you'll be hearing that a lot this time around. After collecting the blue emerald, we take the train to Station Square, hitting the casino button so we can access the next stage of this challenge, Casinoopolis. Tails' version of the stage takes place in the sewer area of the casino, and believe it or not, this one was actually rather tricky to navigate, and that's only in part because of how restrictive and linear the whole area is. Stages that actively mitigate Tails' flight ability forces you to slow down and actually think about your next move. After flying up the first ramp, we're taken to the open area with the fans that carry you up to the air vents. This whole area is littered with various ring containers and trails of rings themselves, some placed right into the entrance of the various air vents. I found it way easier to stay in the centre as the wind carries you up, only moving forward to a vent when Tails was just underneath it to sliver our way through. In the vents themselves, you have to take it slow. If you move too recklessly, you'll run head first into a ring container. Now, some of them you can run under, but for the others, you'll have to jump over them, which can be tense as hell when you're essentially boxed in. With enough persistence though, you'll make it through unscathed. Next, we clear the second vent area with a similar tactic to before, only this time making sure we weave out of the way of the many spinning spike balls that populate the centre. One of the vents in this area has a life container by its entrance. When playing live though, I mistook this as a ring box, and so through overcorrecting myself, I almost ran head first into a trail of rings like an idiot. Eventually, we did manage to clear this hurdle and return to the vents that are now populated with spike balls and ring containers, a Mario Kaizo level designer's wet dream. 
All jokes aside, the only annoying part of this was the ring container placed right in front of the spike ball. So I had to aim my jump in the centre of the two, which was pretty frustrating. I don't think I've even hit these spike balls before, it's just the added pressure of having no rings trying to screw me. After all of this, the grey chaos emerald is just out of reach. At the end of the path filled with spikes, spike balls and green shields. Foolishly, I ignored the green shields for some reason, probably because I didn't want to risk slamming slab dab into one of the spikes. And after a few careful jumps, we cleared the second stage of this challenge. Casinoopolis was definitely harder, but certainly manageable as long as you take your time and plan your movements. Having been gassed for the second time this week, Eggman succeeds in taking our emeralds, and we head on the train with the ice stone to access ice cap zone. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was just simply unable to get through it without collecting a ring. I am convinced you can do this ringless if you put enough time into it. However, there is a glitch we can use to bypass the snowball completely. Apparently, me from a week ago didn't try hard enough as it wasn't as difficult as I made it out to be. No, seriously, I did this on my second try. Ice Cap out of all the stages in this run was the one to give me nightmares before I attempted this properly, as this section has all the hallmarks of making this brutal and a Tails No Ring playthrough. For one, it's linear. Now, whilst there are certain sections that open up later on, for the most part, you're racing in caverns that are played with a ton of rings, and since you're forced into the snowboarding gameplay you can't actively break or fly over them. It was clear that I wasn't going to be able to do this just on reflexes alone, and thankfully I didn't have to. In part because of the rubber band AI, I could deliberately slow myself down and Sonic had to result with careen into the wall to slow himself down as well. For the first section with the avalanche chase, I found as long as you hug the wall to your right, you won't hit any rings. Even if you find yourself getting caught on the wall, the avalanche won't kill you, it just simply pushes you forward to the next section. Now on my first attempt I thought perhaps hugging the wall would allow me to gradually make my way through, and it did to an extent, but once I reached a linear segment where you have to break through the ice blocking your way, I accidentally fell out of bounds to tail his demise. With that strategy out the window, I realised that if you constantly mash the A button to jump, it would reset Tails' momentum, allowing you to slowly inch your way through the level. This made it possible to react to the many trails of rings that don't actually spawn in until you're real close to them. So that's what I did. I jumped constantly, slowly inching my way through the section as Sonic repeatedly smashed his face into the many walls of the stage. The narrow path of the ice is possible to beat ringless, if you hang to the right of the ring trail whilst jumping to ensure you don't accidentally fall into the path. Two and a half minutes of jumping later, we accomplished what I initially thought to be impossible by beating the snowboarding section of Ice Cap without collecting a single ring. GG Tails, GG. Encountering Knuckles by the waterfall, Tails dodges the only form of offence Knuckles will get off during this entire fight, and this is in a cutscene. All we have to do is roll into him three times to win the fight. I'm not gonna lie, this fight was even easier with Tails if that was even possible. Since we stayed on the ground, Knuckles seemed content with sticking to the invisible wall, avoiding the path of rings altogether. Chaos 4 is still as boring and as ugly as it was in the last video. As long as you get a good RNG cycle, this fight can be beaten relatively quickly, but it can drag with how long you have to wait in between his attacks. Since Tails can dunk all over him using his flight, this time around he was far easier. Staying mobile in the air allowed us to actually see where he was, only coming down to the lily pads without rings when Tails gets tired or when Chaos 4 reveals himself. After a minute and a half, we get the final hit on the demented water dolphin, allowing us to move on. Having been nuked from the sky by a laser that should have incinerated them both, Tails and Sonic are separated as they land in two completely different locations despite falling from the same plane. I still have no idea how that works. And even so, where are the remains of the tornado? We never get to see where they actually end up. A trip down memory lane is all the motivation our hero needs to create a new aircraft that can stand up to the marvellous egg carrier. Exploring the jungles, Tails cannot believe his luck as he finds a red emerald just sitting there. So much so he lets a frog beat into the punch, forcing us to traverse all the way down a sandy hill to catch the thief. Forget Sonic, Froggy is the true fastest thing alive. At first, I wasn't sure how this level would play out, given that I could barely remember a thing about it other than being yet another snowboarding section. In practice, it's just another filler level. Like Sky Chase, no rings are present throughout the stage, only these weird gear things that up how many you pass through in a period of time, but nothing really substantial. After finally catching Froggy, Tails is transported to the Ancient Pass, where he finds a weapon of mass destruction turning his feeble spinner sag into the most deadliest Beyblade this side of the universe has ever known. Meeting Knuckles' sister for the first time, taking her for a spin, Tails is returned to the present only to be attacked by a fumbling purple cart, finally completing his new aircraft, the Tornado 2. Saving Sonic from the heights of Red Mountain, our heroes take on the Egg Carrier for the final time, destroying the laser cannon through the many lemon pellets of the little aircraft that could. Next, we crash land upon the runway of the fortress, forcing us to run through the hell that is Sky Deck when Eggman changes the shape of the ship. Now, I still stand by everything that I said about this stage in the last challenge video. I bloody hate Sky Deck. Unlike before though, we're playing as a flight centric god and not a speedy blue rat. The section you raise Sonic in is literally the first section of the stage before the rocket, narrow bridges galore. For Sonic at least, Tails can quite literally fly over everything and beat the stage in 30 seconds. It does make me question though, just how is Sonic moving that fast in Skydeck? What can the rubber band AI do that we simply can't? 
After finally making it to the bridge, our heroes once again stand around and do nothing whilst Eggman collects his sleep emerald. No, I'm sorry, why are they just standing there? Tails with his giant clip can literally kick the emerald over his hands before Eggman even has a chance to escape. Do something! Dr. Eggman escapes to continue his winning ways, leaving us to contend with Gamma once again, who we mercilessly kill with a Beyblade attack. I absolutely love this ability by the way. As the Egg Carrier continues to lose altitude, Tails, Amy and Gamma all escape the collapsing ship while Sonic battles Chaos once again. Arriving in Station Square, Tails observes the defeat of Scientist crash landing upon the streets. His plans now ruined, Eggman plans to nuke the entirety of Station Square with a missile. If Eggman had this sort of firepower from the very beginning, why does he even need Chaos? Eggman, you have an IQ of 500, just nuke the damn city! To top off the worst day of his life, the missile turns out to be a dud, giving Tails the chance to save Station Square all by himself. If he can beat Eggman to the crash site on the other side of speed, highway. Now you'd think that going in that Eggman would prove to be a far bigger challenge than Sonic, given that he's also able to fly over the entire stage, but you'd be completely wrong. For some reason, the AI for Eggman doesn't have any sort of rubber banding, so whilst it's entirely possible to lose to him if you suck, or if you die after hitting a checkpoint near the end as Eggman will also respawn at the checkpoint, you really have no business losing here unless you're intentionally trying to fail. Kind of disappointing as Speed Highway is literally constructed to be flown over, so I was hoping that the rubber banding would have made Eggman harder to race, but apparently not. With his plans foiled once again, Eggman resorts to the ultimate temper tantrum to destroy Station Square using his mechanical stroller. I mean the Egg Walker. Now, where the Egg Viper wasn't anything too special, the Egg Walker under our challenge stipulation was more of a nuisance than it had any right to be. Where do I even begin with this? First of all, the battlefield is the casino area of Station Square, except invisible walls prevent you from walking on the pavement, restricting you to the road. A road where the developers thought to be perfect to spam rings along. What you're actually supposed to do is dash under the Egg Walker itself, avoiding the storm shoes and your tailspin of death to collapse the machine, allowing you to hit the cockpit. This is annoying on so many levels. First of all, the Stomps unleash a shockwave that can kill you if you don't jump over them, meaning you really have to be careful since if you jump too high, you'll die from the base of the cockpit. And even if you collapse the legs, Eggman can fall on top of you and kill you instantly. This actually ended up happening after I had already won the fight. Bro, since I died, it didn't bloody count. After a few tries, I realised that it wasn't really worth it to chase Eggman around the street as it's so easy to die. If you stay on one side of the road, Eggman will eventually come to you regardless, so you're only making it harder for yourself approaching this fight in any other way. Just make sure you get out of the way before the cockpit collapses. You don't want to die through some bullshit which can honestly happen a lot here. The defeat of the Eggwalker gives Tails the confidence he needs to believe in myself, proving that yes, it is possible to beat Tails' story of Sonic Adventure without collecting any rings. However, who am I actually kidding here? I'm sure we all knew this was the case coming in. Overall, I really did enjoy participating in the challenge for this video, but aside from the snowboarding section of Ice Cap blowing my mind that it was actually even possible, everything else just went as I expected whilst writing this challenge. Tails as a whole was simply not built for this sort of open design, and that's shown throughout the fact that he can literally fly over everything. The challenge only became such whenever the level design went against Tails' moveset, either from boxing him into a closed area like Casinoopolis, or when his entire gameplay style is changed to suit the level set piece in Ice Cap Zone. With two stories down, join us again next week as we take on the challenge all over again, this time with Knuckles. I'm really excited to see how this one plays out, as his whole gameplay style is designed around exploration itself, and how that interacts with the ringless stipulation of the challenge. But if you love Sonic content or challenge videos as a whole and want to see more content like this going forward, please consider subscribing and hitting the naughty bell so you don't miss any future uploads. I release a new challenge video almost weekly and I've planned some many new challenges over the coming months. Also, if I can hit 100 subscribers by my 15 April, that would be amazing. For now though, I've taken up enough of your time, so take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye for now.